I'm Bambi Francisco with this segment of Lessons for Entrepreneurs, and I'm speaking with Max Levchin. He is the CEO and founder of Slide. Max, thanks for joining us. Max, you um, you started PayPal in 1998, 1999. You sold it to eBay in 2001 for one and a half billion dollars. So, I guess what's the biggest lesson you learned from that experience? The biggest lesson. Many lessons. Okay, top the, the, two. The, the long, the long list of lessons. Uh, biggest lesson is kind of obvious. Every uh, every entrepreneur sooner or later realizes that it's really all about the people you work with. So, so it's a little. It, it, it's important. as true as it is unexciting, since I'm sure you've heard it a million times. But uh, it really does come down to the team. If uh, you wind up hiring top-notch people, you can live through many changes and survive and do well. And if you don't you're pretty much doomed from the start. Did you take anyone from your team to Slide? Yes, there's a nice overlap between the fair amount of the PayPal DNA and Slide. The problem with uh, the um, really early PayPal people is they're that all successful. They're all, well, they're, one, they're <laughs> so successful, they're starting their own companies. And so the, uh, the PayPal mafia is, uh, is hard at work building their own empires you know, from YouTube to, uh, to Trade Vibes, uh, sort of the, the latest addition to the, uh, to, to the stable. But, um, the um, I think the overlap of uh, rank and file from from yeah. PayPal is uh, is quite nice. So we actually have a, a huge fraction of our early IT and operations team at, at Slide, for example, which is really great because it's the people I worked with for so long. Is there any experience that's particular to you, specific to you? I mean, I, I've talked to a lot of entrepreneurs, and it's team, it's focus, it's. There are all sorts of things that, I mean, they're definitely true, but anything specifically that's happened to you that was a, a big eye-opener? It's a really uh, question I'm not prepared for. Oh. Um, <laughs> no, I, um, so it's always tempting to sort of go into anecdotes. Um, the one thing that's we interesting. We like those, those are good. The interesting thing about um, PayPal experience in particular was that um, we went through, so I ran the engineering team and for a long time as as the CTO, I was really focused on not having engineers report to me. I kept on trying to hire a really seasoned VP of engineering and for one reason or another, it just would not work out. And you know, it was really just a whole plethora of specifics that didn't quite make it. but. Um, then I finally broke down and decided that I'm going to first take the sort of the reins into my own hands. But then, pretty quickly, when I realized that I can't have 27 people at the time reporting to me directly, I started promoting from within. And it was this big change of my mind where I thought, "All oh, these guys have no idea how to manage. I don't know how to manage. I'm 24 years old or 25, whatever. So it's going to be a mess." And it turned out that people just self-organized around natural leaders that were all, you know, 21, 22, 23 years old, but were just known for their hard work and ethic and focus and intelligence and they just sort of learn management on the job without any How did you classic. take that management organizational experience and apply it to slide? Promote from within. That's a, that's a, Promote a, a from clear, within. Okay. clear message to self and anybody who... You, you started with Film Loop. I remember Film Loop and I actually thought it was nice. I remember having it on my computer but I, I remember you walking in, Guy Kawasaki walking in, both sort of had similar ideas but they failed, you succeeded. What did you do right? We changed. The, the trick to succeeding in startups is you figure out what doesn't work. Like if it works, it's not really... It's great to, to be focused on that too but... Uh, what was the path you were on and how did you change? We were very focused on doing desktop software and Filmloop, our primary competitor at the time, was very focused on desktop software as well. And I, I told you uh, right. in my, my you prior conversation You realized you couldn't capture everyone on the desktop. The desktop was a social network. Yes, I realized that the desktop was really not the desktop anymore. And so conquering the desktop, mm -hmm. and it's interesting, I think I don't really know that much about Filmloop, but my, my sense for what really happened there is they had no shortage of users. The users were downloading and installing and the barrier that everybody thought originally was really there. You know, people won't install, they won't download. That's really not really true anymore. It's high bandwidth, people don't mind downloading little sure. applications and getting some value out of them. The problem is that people don't hang out on a desktop so much anymore. They just live yeah. in their browsers. Yeah. And so the key change for a slide was figuring out that the desktop was really not outside the browsers, inside the browser. Was that tough switching gears? Was that like, did that just cause all sorts of no, internal that was the, the other really big lesson from, uh, from PayPal. One of the things that I did consciously early on is I sort of pre-trained my team 
look, there'll be changes. Just just roll with it. It'll be fine. We'll change directions. We'll change business models. We'll change executives. They'll, all sorts of stuff will change around. How do you deal with people who just are so fixated on not changing? Because it's an environment you need to change. It's on occasion has caused people to depart the company yeah. on always on, on decent terms, but I think some people just really cannot handle drastic changes. Yeah. Over time, it's important to stabilize and have sure. a, you know have some sanity to your to your company. But um, you know, on balance, being able to change is probably single most powerful. Uh, and thing you about need that people to be able to change with you too. That, that's that's a, that's it. the biggest part of it. People basically saying, "Yep, I used to work on that piece of code, and it's really important to me, and I love it, and I'm going to put it all aside, and just never going to come back to it." You um, you you're also an investor, so one of the things that um, if you were picking winners of apps, since since Slide is such a great application, and there are all these companies creating these applications to um, to go on social networks, so advice to those people who are creating these applications: what what would be the winning applications you would uh, invest in? Then on. Um, there are a lot of uh, opportunities. I, I really believe that we are rebuilding a desktop from scratch. We're starting with a you know, big blank canvas and there are whole wide open segments, anything from word processing to collaborative content creation to games to communications to a really anything. And uh, the trick is not so much in picking the right app, it's in picking the the segment that you love and you know something about or are passionate about, and then figuring out how to make it better by adding a social layer. So you know, one sort of a classic example of what probably isn't going to work, although I'm sure I'm going to eat my words later on, is moving personal finance to social networks. I think personal finance has a great place on the web, and you know we've been all using the same products for a very long time. It's probably a web version waiting to happen, but I really don't know how I benefit from publishing my uh, tax return to my friends. So that, that's a, a classic example, of, or in my case, right, right, an right. example of where oh, I really you don't, don't... You don't see the finance portion yeah, being that. It's, 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 it's a little bit private. You know, I don't really want to see my tax return in public. But yeah. uh, just yeah. about anything else, really. You know, If you can figure out a way to make it better okay. because your friends are involved, because your immediate or second degree circle is involved, that makes a huge difference. Okay. And then uh, just last question. I think we have some time here. but. Um, any major failure, setback, that you just look at and say, wow, that was, I will never do that again? Trying to, well, it, it wasn't my idea, but um, I think one big mistake startups make is they try to change CEOs in mid-flight and decide that, you know what, we're going to get someone else. Mm -hmm. Just a bad idea. Bad idea. Okay, keep the CEO. Founder CEO, I guess. Founder it? CEO. All right, make sure. You'll, I'm sure you'll keep your job. Yes, that is actually also <laughs> in self preservation. Like, don't <laughs> yeah. fire me. Max, thank you so much for sharing. I've sure. been speaking with Max Levgin. He's the founder and CEO of Slide. He's also uh, the founder of PayPal, which was sold to eBay for $1.5 billion back in 2001. I'm Bambi Francisco with this segment of Lessons for Entrepreneurs.